doesn't want to leave. She wants to come up here. She could be a preacher. She be a preacher one day. <laughs> We have a guest speaker. Can y'all hear me? Okay. We have a guest speaker in the house today. He has spoken before, but I am honored to introduce him. It's our very own Mike Ellis. He's going to be bringing a word that the God that God has given to him today. So if we could welcome him. Thank you. I appreciate y'all giving me that applause, but I don't deserve the applause, but let's give it to Jesus who does. Amen. <laughs> God is so good. I have been given a charge. I had the one from Randy first, but uh, I, w I want to first thank Pastor and Pastor Jason and Pastor Shelley for this opportunity. And I just want to begin, I, I'm under orders to pray for each and every one of you that's here. I just, I just, I love them. I do. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I love you so much, Lord, and I thank you for this opportunity, Lord God. I thank you for Pastor Jason and Pastor Shelley, that you would be with them, watch over them, Lord God, and keep them safe and let them enjoy themselves. I pray... Lord God, that your blessings upon every heart that is here, because there's hearts that are here that are struggling. There's hearts that are here that have great joy, great peace, but there's still some things that are, that are hampering them, that are causing issue. Father, I lift them up to you that you would bless them, coming and going. Let them know I know that they know that you're there, but let them know that you're with them. So guide them, keep them safe, and watch over And Father, I ask you, Lord, that you bring this message that you've given me for this hour, for this day. I ask for the anointing that destroys the yoke, that I get it right. Because that's my prayer. So please, Lord God, touch hearts and change lives in this house that your holy spirit be welcome in this place in jesus name amen hallelujah so how y'all doing there's been a lot of talk about preparedness being prepared being ready being ready for what might occur or something man-made or, or natural, whatever it might be. Because there's different events out there. There's man-made events that can happen, unfortunately. There's, there's natural events, storms, tornadoes. I don't think we have to worry about a hurricane, but we might have to concern ourselves with what's left of it because they do have a tendency to come north. So my question for you is, and what God's asking us today, are we prepared for the suddenlies? Amen. Thank you very much. Did you hear the horn? Shofar. Remember it said that Jesus is going to return with a shout and the blowing of the so far, were each of you prepared at that moment and in that, in that split second, were you ready for Jesus to come in that door and say, it's time and go? Are you ready for the suddenlies that happen in your life that occur, whatever they might be? To show you the way that God works in, in, in my life, most of you know that, I, that, that Debbie and I are, are the coroner's office. And we've been really blessed with having some restful time. And then suddenly, we get a call last night about 1230. And we had to go. And we got done about 6 o'clock this morning. That's one of those suddenlies that we have to be ready for. 
If you look in your Bibles, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. I think it's going to be up there in a minute. Pretty sure I know that lady back there. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. I'm going to say that again. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Revelation 3 3. Remember therefore how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief. And you will not know what hour I will come upon you. I'm sure that many, if not all of us, when we read about in the Bible about coming as a thief in the night. See, a thief comes suddenly. You don't plan on a thief coming to your house. When Jesus comes, we have to know Him. We have to have relationship with Him and love on Him. We can't approach Him haphazardly or through a religious belief system that gives you peace of mind. God wants to give us peace in our hearts. And He wants to see that and know that each and every day. When we take and participate in communion, that's having communion with God. And remembering what He's done in our lives. Because suddenlies can happen at any point in time. It's not a false situation. It's not something that some, you know, somebody is going to cause you to have a problem. It's life. And they happen suddenly. We don't depend on it. There's things like surprises and birthday parties and things of that nature. Yeah, we plan on that. Sometimes when you're in a hurricane, you can plan about three days ahead of time because they usually know how to track it and where it's going and all that. Tornadoes, not so much. Thunderstorms, not so much. Anybody ever been in an earthquake? Not so much. <laughs> But an earthquake comes up on you suddenly, that shaking that happens in your, and you can feel it. It's like you can hear it, but you can't. It, it, there was one here in like 2007, I think, or 2008 in March. It was a 5.3. That was a pretty good shaking. And a lot of people were concerned about it. I mean, if you were watching the news that morning, they were concerned about it. My windows at home were rattling. I was concerned about it. But I wasn't afraid. And that's the key to what God is saying, us, saying to each of us today. And He's saying that through His Word. Suddenly is defined as happening or coming unexpectedly. Not foreseen or prepared for. Sharp, abrupt, Coming or taking place quickly or abruptly, with great haste or suddenly. Suddenly implies extreme quickness, hastiness, and usually unexpectedness. If we are prepared, the suddenlies will not overtake us. The Bible says, for you, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Thessalonians 5 and 2. So the big question here is, are we prepared for the return of our Lord? Are we truly prepared? Are we prepared and sold out, submitted to God that if He came, you wouldn't hold back. You'd be headed for the door. We have to be that way because if we're that way and have a relationship with Jesus Christ, what we would be doing, the fruit that we would be sharing would be the fruit of salvation. The fruit of being born again in relation with Him because we would change. 
We're new creatures in Christ. If we are truly new creatures, if we're truly born again, then there is a change. Because God begins pouring into your soul. He begins pouring Him into you. And during that time when you're brand new, a new Christian, a baby Christian, you might have times to when you slip, you fall. Uh, I got saved in 1991 and I slip and fall. I mess up pretty much on a daily basis. But I want to be quick to find that grace that is ever present and follows around me. It's up here. His grace is sufficient, but we have to rely on Him and the fruit we produce, and that grace is there for us. There is, there's, there's, God's up to something in here. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Father, have your way in this house. Have you ever been in a situation where something happened to you suddenly and you're standing by yourself or you're laying by yourself or wherever you are? And have you ever just cried out the name of Jesus? What happens? That sudden peace, that sudden presence comes over you. It's like coming in here to pray in the mornings or on Wednesday nights we come in here to pray. And you suddenly feel that presence, that warmth. It's like warm oil over your head. Or you get in a tight situation, you holler, Jesus! Hear the silence? Wherever you step your foot into a place and you're new there, Jesus is Lord here. Jesus is King. You submit to God. Bible says, I think it's in 1 John. It says, submit to God and Satan will flee. The enemy will flee from you. But you have to be submitted to him. You have to be submitted to God. The devil has no choice. Things will come against you in this life that happen to you suddenly. And it's upsetting. The devil has our number sometimes and he wants to stop you because you're a threat to him. Your love of God and your wishing to be obedient to Him, to the calling He has on your life. And trust me, many of you in here have a calling on your life. You have a destiny in Him. Be mindful of those times you get awakened at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning and you don't know why. And your eyes go boom and you're awake. When that happens, just listen. Get up, get out of bed, go in, go in the living room, wherever it is that you have a comfortable place. Get a notebook and pen and begin to write. He will speak to you. He will touch you. It's amazing how I come up and I take these notes and he gives me all this information and then all of a sudden after, to, to begin, he just like all of a sudden takes over. And I love that. It doesn't mean, you know, that it's the Holy Spirit within me. He said, out of my belly will flow rivers of living water. Let it rip. Because there's some of you in here right now that you need a touch of the Master's hand. And when you come in here on Sunday, you're like, I need a touch. I need to see Him. I need to know that He's there. I need to know that He's real. Some of you do not have a relationship with Him. Some of you haven't been born again. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand and say if you are or you're not. But we are going to have a time of prayer at these altars because to submit to God, you have to put yourself on that altar and give yourself over to Him. And it takes a lot, especially when you're inside of a building with other people that are back there watching. Trust me, they shouldn't be judging anybody. Okay? Your relationship with God begins at an altar. There's also times when you have to come up to an altar because 
You need God to take care of your family. I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I have two family members that are here with us today. And it just, it just touched my heart. So I didn't do it to embarrass them. But God's doing a work. He's doing a work. When you look around and you see the things going on in the world, don't, don't watch the news. They're, they're being paid to, to do whatever. Okay? And if you sit there in front of that, in front of that news, fake news, whatever you want to call it, 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 all it's going to do is upset you, make you angry, make you see and hear things you really don't want to talk about, and it, it's like manipulation on the part of the enemy. It's okay to watch the weather report on your phone. I mean, everybody's got phones, computers, laptops, and everything else. We are being overwhelmed with information. But the enemy uses that as a tool to try to get you off beat, to try to get you off your timing, to try to get you into a position to where you suddenly realize, hey, I, you ever heard Pastor talk about being right next to Psalm 91, be right, right in the middle with God? And then he talks about how sometimes you kind of get over here and off circle. That's what the devil's trying to do. He's trying to pull you out of your area of safety, okay, and take you to a place you have no business going. I had a wonderful time with Mike uh, yesterday because it's on his heart to touch people. Went up to the square and we're walking the square. We got to see people. We got to pray for people. He led two to the Lord. That's awesome. That's awesome. God is going to touch you and He's going to call you by name because He has a purpose and a destiny for you. Have you ever read in Jeremiah 29, 11? It's amazing, isn't it? He has a purpose for us. He has a call for your life. That's something for us to do. Could He do it? Sure. But He wants us to do it as challenged by Jesus at the end of Mark. The ones that, the ones that need Jesus are outside those doors. It's wonderful being in the church. It is. Being in this building. What Pastor has here and what God's called them and Randy and, and others in here to do. Uve. I don't know how she keeps up. Jesus is right. But the real ministry is out there. And when you are out there somewhere and you feel that suddenly happen to you, there's a, it's something on your heart, and suddenly you see someone that God wants you to speak to, be quick to respond. Be quick to respond to the nudging of the Holy Spirit. Don't look at it this way and go, maybe they didn't see me. No, God saw you. God saw you. One-on-one -on -one ministry. One-on-one -on -one with somebody out here that just needs a touch. Just needs somebody to, to touch their hand. Maybe somebody just needs you to buy them a sandwich or something. Or just speak life into their life. That's why each of us here has a testimony of what God's done in your life. There's things that I've experienced that some of you haven't experienced. There's things you've experienced that I haven't experienced. I guess it was all the OJT that we did in life, huh? On the job training. So when suddenlies happen, are you ready? Are you prepared? Do you have confidence and faith enough to make it through? Do you have enough faith in you that God is going to watch over you? And here's the neat part. Being born again and being a child of God and something major occurs and you suddenly are headed for the gates. 
Wasn't that the plan all along? You know, death is something, it's a door. And every human being on this earth will go through that door called death. Now, it's who you know. It's who you know determines who's going to meet you on the other side of that door. That's not a fear tactic. That's just fact. So what I'm challenging each of you today when these altars open up, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's time. If you have something going on in your life or you have family members you want to pray for and put them on the altar and ask the Lord to touch their lives, now's the time. Because these days that we're living in, these things that we're seeing, the things that are happening, they are increasing. Used to think you could look at a big city like Indianapolis. This never was considered a big city. It was always a small market. It's gotten bigger. Things are happening in Marion County, Indiana, that who'd have thought they would ever be happening? Well, now they're happening in Morgan County. Now they're happening in Owen County. The estimated population of Morgan County is about 70, 75,000. And now it's, it's showing his ugly face here. And we have to stay in prayer, believing, and fight the good fight. We can't hold up in here, okay? The fight is out there. We have to take the fight to the enemy. Because he is an enemy, and he's trying to steal our children. He's trying to steal our families. He's trying to steal our joy, our peace. He's trying to steal this country. You know why? This country is one of only two that was founded on God. Israel in the United States and it's on the brink I'm telling you it's on the brink so be ready be prepared let us pray Father God I thank you for your presence in this place and in this time I thank you for what you're doing on this, in this day, in this hour, that you would use us to do what you have us to do. That you'd ask us to walk by faith, not by, not by sight, and believe, and believe. So watch over each and every one of us today. I want to get these altars open, get our prayer warriors to come up with people. Because someone's going to get a touch today. I think several someones are going to get a touch today. Father, let your Holy Spirit reign in this place. Touch hearts and change lives. In Jesus' name, amen. The altars are open. So you come forward. Pray. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Speak to Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I see. Scars of my Savior, the ransom you paid for. Thank you, Jesus. Save me and call me your friend. I know at the cross you gave it all. And I know at the cross you paid it all. Here's my life, I lay it at the you are worthy of it. You are worthy of it. No turning back, Jesus. Now I surrender my heart, my soul, my all. You can have my heart, my soul. I 
Heavenly Father, again, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time together. I ask you, Lord God, to be with each and every one of us this week. I ask you, Lord God, to use us mightily for your purpose. Touch every heart and change lives, Father. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you want to linger and, and pray, that's fine.